So there were some positive and some negative things said about the recent Halo rebranding. The most notable one that we've probably seen out here was most likely, you know, Marcus Leto when he first reacted to it back on October 6th saying, uh, good to see the new and familiar faces building the Halo team. Uh, Chris Matthews is an excellent choice for studio art director. Uh, the explorations look fantastic. The former co-creator of the Halo universe being like, you know what? You get a thumbs up from me. Here's a little and a little gold star you can put on your on your shirt there, Halo Studios. Excellent job. So my name was not so much. Um, in particular here, Caleb, friend of the channel, by the way. So back on a couple days after Marcus Leto's uh, response, or a couple days after the news of Halo Studios rebranding. So the problem I had with the Halo video is that it implies the issue has been with the art and not the mountains of tech debt partially brought upon by Microsoft policies like 18 month contract policy and a focus on scalable MTX content <laughs> instead of deeply fulfilling fun gameplay. And it's like, yeah, you know, he's right about that. But like, do you really think that three, that was trying not three, four, three Halo Studios is going to be like, you know what? We had to stop and redo everything with Halo because we f***ed up. We f***ed up real bad. Like, no, they're not going to say that. <laughs> they're not going to say like all the, all this time we spent working on the engine was all for nothing, which it was, but <laughs> they can't just like say that because so they have to like, you know, they got kind of to frame everything in a really positive light uh, for whatever they're going to say, right? They can't just be like, you know what? We kind of messed everything up and uh, it's too difficult to make Halo now. And we need to hit reset again on the Halo franchise <laughs> to actually get it right. <laughs> I don't think he really implied anything with the art direction. I, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, really. I don't know what I'm even trying to say right now, dude. Like, <laughs> like when the way he said that right here saying that, like, it's like an issue with like art. And it's like, I never really got that vibe from the whole thing. I think it was more just like them passively acknowledging that they really messed up with Halo Infinite and they need to hit reset how like almost all of the upper management of 343 are no longer there. Like the old guard is gone and we have a new, not a fully new, like completely new team, but like the old people that they pretty much every, the people that everyone disliked at 343 are no longer at 343 for the most part, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they can't say about the mountains of tech debt and also the Microsoft, you know, 18 month contract policy, which I think that's kind of also one thing they kind of talked about with like calling themselves Halo Studios, plural. I think that really stands for that they're going to have external teams working on Halo as well to be able to make a Halo game, make Halo games, just multiple Halo games, right? It's not gonna be just the team at Microsoft working completely doing everything on Halo, right? Um, this is kind of ties into the rumors that we talked about earlier on the channel, right? Where we heard like 343 was gonna move to much more of a management studio, a central hub, rather than like a development team. And that's when Pierre Hinsa came out and said like, no, we're still making Halo games, which it's true, that's accurate. Um, but I think they're going to look into maybe hand off some workloads to external teams, which could then be a way for them to get away, get around that 18 month contract issue. You know what I mean? Um, but also uh, Caleb kind of continues on with uh, his statements here. And, and I'm not saying that people didn't like 343 games. I'm just pointing out the transparent issues that aren't fixed without major company wide changes on the Microsoft level. All I saw in the video was essentially modern concept art, cool graphics though, and it's like, yeah, Caleb, like, like, let's, 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 let's have a W, man. I would say also that it does also kind of point out the fact that like maybe nothing's really changed when it came to like how like Microsoft handles Halo to the, a lot, but more just about like how the team that makes Halo you know, Halo Studios is making it because like, unless we hear anything about like the, the 18 month contract thing being a big issue that that could have been the, then like nothing's really going to change when it comes to that. Maybe it could be a big reason why they decided to switch over to Unreal because one, we know that time is of the essence for our new Halo project to get out for people to engage with. 
Um, and if you're going to be stuck with the 18 month contracts, at, uh, at Halo Studios, you need to have an engine that people know and love. And Unreal is that industry standard that pretty much everyone knows and gets their start in game game development with Unreal. So if you need to just have people get right in and start making things, Unreal is a perfect engine to do that in. Uh, so you don't have to worry so much about like get ramping people up with like specific like in-house tools that like you can't train people on until they're actually there. Then you gotta spend three to six months to get people up to speed. So you get maybe like a good year's worth of work out of people. But then once they know that contract date's coming around, like those next, those ending months on their contract, they're they're, they're one foot out the door already because they're looking like, how do I feed my family now? And that's 18 month contract thing. That's just a like Microsoft wide thing. Now having Halo Studios means that like, maybe if you have your full-time employees at the locate the home, the HQ location, right? Where 343, studio is over in Redmond, but then you have these external teams as like managed surface teams. That's a very important thing to point out as well. As I used to be part of, I used to be a contractor at Microsoft and there was like, you can either be contracted by Microsoft themselves, which is that 18 month rule, um, or you can be a part of a managed service team, which means it's more like you are a, Microsoft is hiring a team to do a service for them. And that's where I was part of where I was still a contractor under Microsoft, had like, you know, Microsoft email and all that kind of stuff. I was like, referred to as what they call a V-dash uh, email. Um, and so what that meant though, it's like, like I was able to stay on a project for as long as Microsoft wanted me to be on it. And so that's kind of like the workaround from the 18 month thing. So I think that could be one thing that they're trying to do with Halo Infinite now is maybe rely for next Halo Infinite, but next Halo game is to rely on much more like managed service teams to help support rather than trying to do everything themselves because if you want to try to keep up with your competition being call of duty with the main one you know you gotta really step your game up when it comes to the content side of things that's my big take from that one my big response from kayla about that uh but we also had one another major response which is probably the most damning out of them all when it comes to the reactions of halo studios and former 343 employees reaction to it uh, this one, you might have seen some videos about it as well, because this kind of happened uh, a while ago. I just haven't really had time to get around to it. But uh, senior animator Will Waltz, who used to work at 343 Industries, thoughts on the new, quote, new management at Halo Studios. And he said this on LinkedIn. Like, so what's up with LinkedIn all of a sudden being like a news source? Like, what's going on with that? <laughs> LinkedIn is actually being useful now, guys. That's crazy. <laughs> I worked for them as a top performing industry animator for 13 years. I didn't, I do not recommend working for 343 Industries Halo Studios. It's like Comcast calling themselves Xfinity and hoping nobody notices. Uh, damn. Steer clear and stay safe out of there. Uh, they are not worth it. Feel free to PM. That's crazy, dude. Uh, to be clear, employees have been some of the industry's finest because we all have found memories of the ha of Halo and the Microsoft pay is nice, but their leadership is cancer. Pierre especially, and you'll hate how creatively limiting they are, which I mean, old habits die hard, right? <laughs> uh, I've also heard some things about Pierre from people who formerly worked at 343 as well that like he has the right idea but maybe maybe goes about not the best way but it's like it's not like he's like from I've heard from I've heard from people that worked at 343 that like they like he's not like a bad boss or anything he just like has a very strong vision of what he's going to do with Halo and you know you got to cut the line off there somewhere and sometimes you got employees out there that will disagree with how the boss wants to do things but sometimes you gotta go like whatever you say boss you know what i mean and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so always keep that in mind uh i have no doubt that even though these execs finally gave into switching to unreal they will find a way to organ organizationally make it unfun to work there like damn uh, saying like in a private mess or another message here saying uh they screwed us we fought for years for them to switch to unreal even before infinite's production started and 
all throughout it. The directors and Pierre fought against it uh, with the rest of them. Pierre came back, laid off the loudest voices for Unreal and some of the best developers in the industry, us, uh, and then finally took the our advice. Feels good. Damn, dude. Like that's that's rough to hear, especially since like from what I've heard most of the times from people's experience working at 343 that they really like the people there. They really like the stuff that they work on, but maybe management uh, might not have the best clue of how to uh, make a Halo game. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's kind of like the big thing, right? Like basically the limitations of what Microsoft puts on Halo is what makes making Halo not fun. <laughs> the turning of a new leaf possibly when it comes to how they're making Halo. That like maybe three for Microsoft finally got the message of being like, hey, we probably have been messing up a lot when it comes to making Halo. Let's do something different. You know, rebrand rebrand 343, call it Halo Studios, rely on some external teams for con making content and stuff like that. Switch to an Unreal Engine within our confines of limitations, right? Like specifically like the 18 month contract thing. Pierre saved the MCC from my understanding. Yeah, he, he was the uh, the lead to the, of the MCC team during like the whole like to make it actually functioning and something people actually want to play and <laughs> kind of movement and bring it over to the pc and all that kind of stuff so like the stuff he did with mcc was fantastic i think maybe that what will waltz said like it's kind of up to like interpretation and you know personal experience he might have the full story of like why things are the way they are he might and it also be one of those people who are like very strong-headed in what they want to do i mean but then again he was he was at Microsoft for, for working on Halo for 13 years. So something about it was good enough to stay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the pay and the people were good, it seems like. But uh, everything else about it was kind of rough. But if it was that bad, you would stay for 13 years there or look somewhere else. Because if you're working on Halo, especially a Halo game, like you have such an amazing bit of experience right there. To say like I worked on Halo as like a senior animator, you can pretty much get an animation job literally anywhere else in the industry because you have like Halo on there. It's a recognizable name, huge title, big budget, like everyone knows about it. It's an amazing experience. So I'm not but you know, I hate to be that guy, I'd be like, well, if it sucks so much, why didn't you leave? It's like obviously there's a lot more to it. I think because like so much of what 34 now Halo Studios has changed, it's all back end stuff. It's not like anything that's really Change. I don't think really think anything's going to change when it comes to Halo development, or I should say, like the front side, the how players are going to engage with Halo. I think the because like all the stuff that's really changing is like how the game is made, the engine that they're using, and maybe using more managed service teams to make Halo. It's all back end business stuff that doesn't really directly involve the player, or something like a casual player would even really care too much about. Like here in Unreal, it's like that's cool. But it's like, is that anything really that like gets like a your typical players excited or players who just like kind of hop in and just play Halo casually? Probably not. And so it's kind of tough to speculate on what's going to be happening um, moving forward when it comes to this game, this franchise, you know, until we actually see something, which I would be shocked if we don't see anything from Halo for the June showcase for 2025. Like, I think we're going to get like that CE remake announcement coming fall 2025 yeah, i'm just saying throwing it out there that'd be kind of cool <laughs>